Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about hypoxia and the possible causes for hypoxia. Now, oxygen, as you remember, is uh, diffuses into the capillaries that surround the alveoli. So several things are required for the oxygen to move from the air outside into the alveoli and then into the bloodstream. So hypoxia is something that is caused um, by something that blocks the oxygen at any one of these levels. Okay, So the first thing that can happen is you can have decreased fraction of inspired oxygen. So there's just not as much oxygen in the air the person is breathing. So that's called, you know, that would be decreased yeah, decreased FiO2 or fraction of inspired oxygen. So fraction of inspired oxygen. So usually that is you know 19 to 21 percent depending on the level of moisture in the air. Um, so how can this decrease? Well, you can be suffocating and you know you're in a small space or you know you've got a small space around your airway like a bag over your head um, and you are slowly using up all the oxygen in that small enclosed space and that causes suffocation as your body uses up oxygen the FiO2 is going to drop. The other possibility is high altitude. Maybe if you're riding in an airplane and there's a loss of cabin pressure um, you're going to at that, those higher altitudes the um, level, the amount of oxygen in the air is much lower um, and that's going to decrease the amount of oxygen that you can be breathing in. So number one is decreased fraction of inspired oxygen. Um, number two would be hypoventilation. You're not breathing enough to bring air in. Now, if you remember our earlier slides when we talked about hypoventilation, the first thing that's going to happen with hypoventilation, because it diffuses much faster, is that, whoops, actually CO2 levels are going to increase in the bloodstream, right? Because um, the CO2 is going to build up very quickly in the um, alveolar space because of its rapid diffusion and then only after a few minutes later is the oxygen level going to drop. Okay, So that's the th second thing that could happen. The third thing that could happen is that there is just decreased blood flow past the alveoli and if you decrease blood flow past the alveoli there is um, less blood to exchange oxygen at the alveolar level. So you could have decreased cardiac output. And this usually has to be fairly extreme because there is such a large reserve in the lungs. So you'd really have to get it, um, your cardiac output down to, you know, sort of about half normal. Normal in, in, a, um, in a male, I believe it's 2.2 liters to um, 4 or so. And uh, I'd have to look the numbers up to be precise. It's been a while since I've worked with uh, swan catheters. But, um, you know, to have a significant drop in, in oxygen levels because of poor perfusion um, through the lungs, you would really have to have a cardiac output drop to like 1.5 liters per minute or less. And obviously, you're going to have many issues with systemic hypoperfusion as well with that kind of drop in cardiac output. Um, now, another possibility is we could have impairment of this membrane. So if we have thickening of the alveolar capillary membrane, remember oxygen is diffusing by down its concentration gradient by um, simple diffusion. And this works very well because usually the membrane is 0 0.2 nanometers thick. 
Now, if you increase the thickness of this membrane, you are going to decrease the diffusion of oxygen, and you're going to require a higher gradient. So the, so the oxygen concentration here in, in the bloodstream is going to be much, much lower than it is because it's crossing a um, thicker membrane. So number four here would be, here, let me make that green. Number four would be impaired diffusion. And this happens with some diseases um, that cause pulmonary fibrosis. So fibrotic membrane. And we have ways of measuring um, diffusion. Um, there is a test called uh, DLCO, which is the diffusion of carbon monoxide. And we actually use small amounts of carbon monoxide to test the ability to, of, um, of the gas to diffuse across this capillary membrane. And it is a good estimate of our ability to for oxygen to diffuse across that membrane. So if someone has had a complete set of pulmonary function tests, one of the tests that they will have is a test of, um, of their DLCO, which is a measure of diffusion and if there's significant impairments in um, that diffusion it suggests that there is fibrosis of the membrane and that in itself can be a cause of hypoxia. Okay and then the next would be a right to left shunt. Now a right to left shunt suggests that oxygen is moving from the right side of the heart to the left side of the heart without getting oxygen, without passing by oxygenated alveoli. Oh, here's a rough picture of our heart. So remember on you know the right side of the heart which has unoxygenated blood we have going through the pulmonary arteries and into the lungs, right? And on the left side of the heart, we have oxygenated blood, and that leaves the left ventricle through the aorta into the, into the systemic circulation. Now, one type of shunt may involve um, a um, anatomical defect that causes the unoxygenated blood to mix with the oxygenated blood. So it may be a PFO otherwise known as an atrial septal de defect. Um, it could be a ventricular septal defect or VSD. And this will cause it to, um, this is a physiologic, this is a anatomic shunt that causes the blood from um, the left side of the heart, uh, the right side of the heart to mix with the left side of the heart. Now we can also have a physiologic shunt and this is the other name for a physiologic shunt is um, is called a ventilation to perfusion mismatch or VQ mismatch and we talked about this in another slide. VQ mismatch. And this just means that um, blood, in, because of some kind of disease, is passing unoxygenated alveoli. So, you know, the in, in the most typical cases, this alveoli is filled with fluid or pus from infection. So it could be filled with, um, you know, alveoli um, filled with pus, and it's still being perfused because of vasodilation from the inflammatory mediators, or the alveoli may be filled with water because of edema, because of CHF, and um, there's no vasodilation here. However, because of increased um, increase venous pressure, it's going to sort of stent the veins open and it's going to, going to cause perfusion of edematous alveoli. 
So this is called a VQ mismatch. It is sometimes called a physiologic shunt. And it just means that the um, that we are perfusing a number of unoxygenated alveoli. So the blood is re returning to the heart unoxygenated from parts of the lung. Now all of these things can cause decreased oxygen levels, and particularly arterial oxygen levels. And we will note them on an arterial blood gas. Okay, so that is a brief introduction to hypoxia. Now I do want to make the point that in um, most acute situations, acute hypoxia is most commonly caused by a VQ mismatch. Um, I would say, the, you know, if you have a newborn baby, um, sometimes we will have an anatomic shunt. Um, there are some um, disease conditions that can cause chronic hypoxia that cause um, impaired diffusion because of fibrosis of the membrane. And that hypoxia usually will have a mixed picture. Um, hypoventilation is sometimes the cause in chronic condition conditions like COPD. Um, so really all of these um, all of these causes of hypoxia can occur in chronic conditions but the most common cause of acute hypoxia is typically a VQ mismatch that is caused either by pulmonary edema or infection. Okay please let me know if you have any questions and please take a moment to rate this by giving it a thumbs up or a thumbs down and um, Please, um, if you do give it a thumbs down, tell me why in a comment. Thank you very much.